Government attempts to challenge a successful no confidence vote in the courts is an abuse to the process. Former Jamaican PM says Karika must stand ready to assist Guyana as uncertainty persists. Bandits steal safe at Melanie Damishan NIS office, Thai guards and return their gun. And in sport, Guyana Jaguars remain a top point stable in Regional 40 tournament. These and more right now in this our Tuesday, January 8, 2019 edition of News Update. Good evening, I'm Sandy Ramutar. Thanks for joining us. A planned meeting of the Ghana Elections Commission today was called off after Chairman of the Commission, retired Justice James Patterson, was advised by his doctors to further extend his medical leave to an unannounced date. Here are the details. The Guyana Elections Commission, which is supposed to be in full preparatory mode for the 2019 snap election, is still without an active chairman. Chairman of the Commission, retired Justice James Patterson, proceeded on medical leave early December 2018 due to an illness. The chairman was expected to resume duties and reconvene a statutory meeting today, but was unable to do so as his medical leave was further extended. In a statement from the Elections Commission, the 85-year-old chairman was advised by his doctors to take additional rest. While no details were given on the nature of his health, he is said to be recovering well at this time. The chairman's illness has been a cause for concern for the opposition People's Progressive Party. The party is concerned whether his illness will impact or hamper the functions of the electoral body. More importantly, the Elections Commission indicated to this newscast yesterday that the entity already started its administrative work plan for general and regional elections due by March 21, 2019, after the government fell on December 21, 2018 when it lost the confidence vote. A popular constitutional lawyer has declared a challenge to the confidence motion is an abuse to the process. He has written to the High Court seeking to be named as a party to share his expertise in the case. Attorney at law Safir Hussein, who is a well-known constitutional lawyer, has commented on the confidence motion debacle, which has been the topic of debate in recent times. Hussein, who wished not to expand on the issue, believes that the process is being abused. I will, I will submit in relation to, what, uh, to them that maybe it's an abuse of the process. Affirming that he has studied the constitution that refers to confidence vote and the majority, he mentioned that he has written to be named as a party in all the matters filed. Hussein believes his expertise will assist the process. After, if you are permitted to be joined, as I think one of the most experienced lawyers in constitutional law in this country and elsewhere, um, I will be of assistance to the court, I think, as well. There have been different views of following the passage of the confidence motion on December 21, 2018, which essentially toppled the government. The Attorney General Basil Williams, Prime Minister Moses Nagamutu, and Attorney at Law Nigel Hughes, amongst others, believe the motion was not properly passed by a majority of all elected members of the National Assembly. They contended that majority of the elected members of the National Assembly would amount to 34. However, the opposition party, the Guyana Bar Association and other stakeholders agree that 33 votes are greater than 32, therefore the motion was properly passed. The Speaker of the National Assembly, Dr. Barton Scotland, who ruled on December 21 that the motion was passed, refused to overturn his decision after being asked to review it by the government. He instead deferred the interpretation of the Constitution to the courts. Reporting for MTV News Update, Godfrey Brooms. Two females have been arrested after they were found with over 22 grams of cocaine at a house in Daniel Sang Esiquiver Coast. According to information from the police, officers searched the home of one of the women and reportedly found the cocaine. They have been arrested and cocaine confiscated. They are likely to be placed in court soon. You're watching MTV's News Update. More news after the break. Stay with us. 
Modern Optical Service has made it even better by introducing its budgeted spectacle line, starting as low as $10,000 for single vision lens and $12,000 for bifocal lens, available in tinted or clear, complete spectacles at affordable prices. So hurry down to our main office at 316 Middle Street or Lot 14 Diamond Public Road opposite Demerara Bank. Enjoy over 60 years of eye care experience at affordable prices. Modern Optical Service, your eye care professionals. Are you invited to that important event but don't know what to wear or frustrated you're wearing the same dress as everyone else? You crave for this exclusive look? Then do just that with dresses from Exclusive Dresses to Impress. Visit Exclusive Dresses to Impress at Giveland Mall. Contact number 6570166. Beeson Windows and Doors, fully equipped to handle all your commercial projects. Whether you're constructing a small or large commercial building, residential property, or just upgrading your home, they got you covered. Beeson Windows and Doors, providing unmatched quality windows for your home, office, and commercial building. Located at 1228 Eccles Industrial Site. For more information, call 662-4197 or 622-6943. Former Jamaican Prime Minister Bruce Scolding says Kari can must stand ready to assist Guyana with the protracted period of uncertainty in its political climate. Leaders around the globe are watching closely at the much-debated confidence motion which was passed in the National Assembly on December 21, 2018. Among the onlookers is former Jamaica Prime Minister Bruce Golding, who articulated his views in the Jamaican Observer. The leader says the Caribbean community must stand ready to offer assistance if needed that is acceptable to both parties. A constitutional crisis emerged after history was made with the passage of the first ever debated confidence motion in Guyana. The government refused to adhere to Article 106, 6 and 7 of the Constitution and called elections within 90 days from when the motion was passed and is now arguing that 34 votes is needed to pass the motion as against the customary 33. 33 votes was always deemed the majority in Guyana's political history, but the government argued that 34 votes were needed for the successful passage of the confidence motion. Government member Charan Dows Persaud voted in favor of the motion to defeat the government in the opposition-sponsored confidence motion. The former Prime Minister urged the private sector and trade union movements to engage the parties towards a solution that will sustain stability and confidence. Golden warned that political stability will be a critical factor to ensure investor confidence in the oil extraction and downstream industries. He said the country cannot afford to flatter at this time as it is poised for an era of unprecedented development and prosperity. The leader reminded that it would take time for the issues to be adjudicated more so at the Caribbean Court of Justice. Charon Dawes Persaud has spoken again and had bashed the government he was once a part of. He claims the government is embarrassing Guyana as they refuse to resign. Here is God for Brooms. As the government refused to resign as mandated by the constitution, after a confidence motion is passed, the person who is responsible for bringing down the government has once again spoken. Charandas Prasad, who voted against his government, claims Guyana is being brought into disrepute by the government's refusal to resign. They're embarrassing us as Guyanese because these are hungry, power-hungry people. They don't want to give it up. But still, like I said, they're not going to give it up. Charandas, who is a lawyer by profession, stated that though the matter is in court, the government still has to comply with Article 1066, which mandates the resignation of the cabinet, including the president. The AP and UAFC government, headed by the Honorable David Granger, a very honorable man, and Mr. Moses Nagamutu, the prime minister supporting him, a man who's like a rubber stamp, must resign. The adjudicator, the judge, so to speak, is the Speaker of the National Assembly. He has ruled that the vote of no confidence has been passed by a majority. The government, only yesterday, filed a challenge in the High Court seeking to nullify the passage of the confidence motion. 
They are also asking the court whether the requisite majority of all the elected members of the National Assembly ought properly to be 34 and whether the president and all ministers of government can remain in office. Reporting for MTV News Update, Godfrey Brooms. All giant Exxon Mobil has begun drilling at the Haimaru 1, first of its two wildcat wells to be drilled in this month as Guyana prepares to commercially produce oil in 2020. Here is that story. Exxon Mobil yesterday announced that it has begun drilling one of the two wells planned for January, known as the Haimaru 1. The well is being drilled by the Steta current drill ship and is located 19 miles east of the Pluma 1 Discovery in the southeast of Starbrook Block. The noble tour maiden drill ship is also expected to drill the second well, Tilapia 1, located about 3 miles west of the Longtail 1 Discovery. In addition to this, preparations are underway for the start of pipeline activities in the laser field in the spring. Potential exists for at least five Laser Destiny floating production storage and offloading vessels on the Starbuck block to producing more than 750,000 bars of oil per day by 2025. The Laser Destiny FPSOs is expected to sail from Singapore to arrive off for Guyana in the third quarter of 2019. A second PGS vessel has been released after seismic acquisition activities were suspended on December 22 when vessels were approached by the Venezuelan Navy in Nerd east portion of the Starbrook block. The oil giant noted that the drilling and development operations were unaffected by the incident, which occurred more than 110 kilometers from the range of discovery. Exxon Mobil and its affiliate SO Exploration and Production Guyana Limited is operating and holds 45% interest in the Starbrook block. Hess Guyana Exploration Limited holds 30% interest and Nexim Petroleum Guyana Limited holds 25% interest. Three men are being sought after they broke into the NIS office in Melanie Damishan, East Coast Lemurar, and carted off with a metal safe containing a sum of cash. That incident occurred about 13 hours, 30 today. According to the police, the suspects first pounced on the two female security guards on duty, relieved them of a service revolver with six rungs and a cellular phone. The men then carried the guards to the back of the building and bound their hands and feet. The police say the men were kind enough to return the weapon. You're watching MTV's News Update. When we return, Guyana needs a specialty hospital as citizens are still forced to seek treatment overseas. And the Food and Drug Department losing fight against counterfeit drugs. Stay with us. Everything is connected. Our planet, our water sources, including the water we drink. Sometimes harmful bacteria end up in our streams and canals. Although treated, the risks are high. You can prevent this pollution and contamination by maintaining your septic tank and grease traps. Call the experts at Puran Brothers Disposal Incorporated on 264-1239 or 603-5050. Keeping it clean is what we do best. When I was a child, I secured my savings in a piggy bank. But now that I'm an adult, I keep my savings secured at Hand in Hand Trust in a secured savings account. They offer very attractive rates, and you can start with a minimum deposit of only $2,000. You can also open a fixed deposit with a minimum of only $100,000. So, if you're still using a piggy bank, make the transition today. Come into Hand in Hand Trust Corporation and start saving the secure way. Hand in Hand Trust Corporation Inc., a member of the Hand in Hand group of companies. Did you know almost one third of deaths in Guyana are heart related? Chronic inflammation is the root cause of atherosclerosis, the process that leads to cholesterol clogged arteries. You can now lower high triglyceride levels with Omega XL and reduce the dangerous inflammation that causes these problems. So to ensure a healthy heart and reduce your risk of disease, get your Omega XL today. Live long, stay strong with Omega XL. You can be a millionaire by only spending $100 on a Daily Million ticket. Simply pick any five numbers from 1 to 26, or you can buy a quick pick for your chance to win the Daily Millions. Purchase your tickets daily Monday through Saturday to get a chance to win $1 million every day. So, 
Feeling lucky? Then buy a Daily Millions ticket today. Remember, a ticket today could make you rich today. Your one-stop decor solution for gala dinners, weddings, birthdays, cocktail functions, backdrops, props, and more? Check out exclusive decor design, Ground Floor City Mall. We have a wide variety to suit your stylish seating and table decor, exclusive centerpieces, colorful maro, and much more. Working with a small budget? No problem. We've got you covered. Call 225-4434 or 657-0166. We listen, we create, you enjoy. Welcome back, you're watching MTV's News Update. With a significant increase in the number of Guyanese seeking specialized medical treatment overseas, the dire need for a specialty hospital locally has once again come into the spotlight. Here's Lashana Gomes, Cornelius. Of recent, cases of Guyanese needing financial support to seek specialty medical care overseas have been dominating the airwaves. For many of those individuals, the pressure is of finding specialty doctors in Guyana to treat various types of diagnosed and sometimes undiagnosed illness leaves them frustrated with nowhere else to turn but to the public for assistance. It was for this very reason that the previous administration had envisioned unstarted plans to establish a specialty hospital here. The facility was estimated to cost somewhere in the vicinity of U.S. $15 million. However, due to a host of issues regarding claims of corruption, the entire project was squashed after the then-opposition APNU AFC used its one-seat majority to cut budgetary allocations for the project. At that time, now Public Security Minister Kemraj Ramjatan was the lawyer for one aggrieved bidder. Federer's Lloyd, which lost the bid to another Indian-based company, Syringer Engineering. After entering office, Ramjatan used his ministerial influence to the contract handed to Federer's Lloyd. But the project was scrapped after revelations that the company was discredited in several other countries. At the time of the project's initial genesis at a location Liliandal East Coast Demerara and then finally terminated, the coalition decided that a remainder of the U.S. $14 million will instead go toward primary health care facilities in the country. In earlier March 2018, 17-year-old Susanna Culpepper was severely burnt about parts of her face, hands and feet. After her boyfriend threw a china bomb at the home of Chavez Watson, where Culpepper was staying at the time. Culpepper's family, desperate to have their daughter lead a normal life, took to the public for financial assistance in having her seek specialty care overseas, as the burns to her feet left her unable to walk independently. While 26-year-old old Tiffany Williams of Eccles East Bank Demerara, diagnosed with a brain tumor in the latter part of 2017, had reached out to the public for assistance to have treatment abroad. Williams, who had received the dreadful news after she had undergone an MRI scan, had been experiencing bouts of dizziness and fainting spells. Only recently, the family of 13-year-old Chitra Mayana of Bushlot Burbies, who only a few weeks ago was diagnosed with a rare strain of cancer, is seeking financial assistance in acquiring a visa and relevant treatment for him. The need for expert medical specialty care in Guyana is not limited to just ordinary Guyanese, but even the head of state, President David Granger, recently diagnosed with a strain of cancer, non-Hodgkin lymphoma, has been traveling overseas to Cuba for chemotherapy treatment. Reporting for MTV News Update, Lashawn Gomes, Cornelius. We tell you now that the Food and Drug Department is having a difficult time tracking the issue of counterfeit drugs being sold to patients. However, this is one of the five the department is all winning to throw in the towel. Here again is Lashawn Gomes, Cornelius. According to the director of the Food and Drug Department, Marlon Cole, 30% of medical drugs in Guyana are substandard. Cole, during an exclusive interview with this newscast, related, despite the challenges, the issue of counterfeit drugs is one which the department is assiduously working to address. Those are currently under investigation, but they are drugs that treat illnesses such as diabetes, painkillers, in some cases, street uh, for just for heart conditions that we that are currently under the microscope, where we're um, 
currently investigating. The issue of counterfeit drugs or food fraud is not is here to stay because it's lucrative. And we just have to remain vigilant and arm ourselves with the necessary tools to detect, um, prevent, and protect. Cole indicated that for 2018 alone, there were a number of complaints made to the department regarding the presence, distribution, and usage of counterfeit drugs. Many complaints, he noted, came from doctors, pharmacists, distributors, and patients. The information comes from the Global Health um, Drug Monitoring System. They send out notification. We do reporting as well. Information comes from consumers. In some cases, doctors would report to pharmacists that the drug is not efficacious, and that is when we are dependent upon our pharmacovigilance system. And in some cases, the importers, the official distributors, would pen a document to the Food and Drug Department outlining the um, issues with counterfeited or items that are not to be sold in our zone. Reporting for MTV News Update, LaShawna Gomes, Cornelius. The police have issued wanted bulletins for Yogendra Jirnarine and Kelvin Shiv Gubin in relation to the murder committed on Harry Turan and Prem Turan Samaru on December 31, 2018. Anyone with information that may lead to the arrest of the duo is asked to contact the police. The police have given the assurance that all information will be treated with the strictest of confidence. The January session of the Demora Assizes was today opened with a customary military parade by the Ghana Police Force in front of the Supreme Court of Judiciary. The January session of the Demarara Assisis was today opened with a customary military parade by the Guyana Police Force in front of the Supreme Court of Judicature. <laughs> Some 251 cases are scheduled to be tried this year with rape, murder and attempted murder claiming majority of the matters. Several high-profile murder cases are listed for trial including the case of Sherwin Nero and Mark Williams. The two men, better known as Cathy and Smalley, are accused of killing businessman Kumar Singh on August 30, 2007 after four gunmen invaded his East Coast Demerara home. Singh was shot and killed in the process. Smalley is no stranger after being convicted for the Bartika massacre. He was recaptured last year after escaping from the Jorshong prisons during its fiery destruction. The cases of Lennox Wayne called Two Colors and Melora Doris are yet to be tried, but are once again scheduled for the January session. <laughs> Reporting for MTV's News Update, Celine Griffith. Residents living in the West Romveld area have complained about a neighbor who continuously burns their garbage at nights for the past few weeks, which is posing a health risk for the community. This is a criminal offense that mandates a fine. Here is Kipani Jordan. The burning of backyard trash releases toxic pollutants such as carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, and nitrogen oxides. Last evening was a typical example of air pollution after a fire was lit on a parapet of the St. John Road around West Rheinveld, which posed a health risk to the families of that area. Residents of the West Rheinveld community made calls to the 912 fire hotline seeking assistance in putting out the fire, but nothing was done. MTV made contact with the fire chief, Marlon Gentle, who firmly stated that we have other priorities to deal with, and we will look into that later. We have a fire in Sophia that we need to put out. When asked if all the trucks have gone to that area, he replied, saying he does not need to go through that, but they have other priorities, and no one is at risk in West Rheinveld. There's a fire station on the West Rheinveld Front Road, which is in close proximity to the blaze. According to the Summary Jurisdiction Offenses Act, Chapter 802, Section 153.135, a person commits an offense if, in any part of the town or any place immediately adjacent thereto, makes any fire in the yard or other part of any house or premises except in the kitchen, whereby the town or any house or other building, shed or outhouse therein, or in the immediate vicinity thereof or adjacent thereto, may be endangered. It further states, every person who does any of those acts shall in each case be liable to a fine of no less than $7,000. News Update has made several attempts to call the city mayor, Ubraj Narain, on the matter at hand, but those efforts have proven futile. 
Kippany Jordan reporting for MTV's News Update. We now join Selling Graphite with your quote roundup. <laughs> The man who stabbed his son to death was today sentenced by Justice Navinder Singh to 14 years in jail. 49-year-old Amar Nath Chand was sentenced to 14 years after he pled to the lesser charge of manslaughter for killing his son Mudish Chand on September 26, 2016. The young man died as a result of a stop to heart and the incident was reportedly witnessed by his sister and mother. According to reports, Chand and his wife were involved in an argument when his son intervened. This angered the man who went on a chopping spree on his own son. The man's attorney, Kiyomo Griffith, told the court that the incident was spontaneous and the man regrets the loss of his son. Prosecutor Abigail Gibbs stated that the man showed genuine remorse, but the message must be sent to the public that these acts are unacceptable. Chand, who asked the court to be merciful, was further advised to seek anger management during his incarceration. Reporting for MTV's Court Roundup, Celine Griffith. Kipani Jordan now joins us with today's tips for healthy living. Since ancient times, honey has been used as both a food and medicine. It is very high in beneficial plant compounds and offers several health benefits. Honey is particularly healthy when used instead of refined sugar, which is 100% empty calories. Here are a few health benefits of honey. High quality honey is rich in antioxidants. High quality honey contains many important antioxidants. These include organic acids and phenolic compounds like flavonoids. Honey is less bad than sugar for diabetes. The evidence on honey and diabetes is mixed. On one hand, it can reduce several risk factors for heart disease common in people with type 2 diabetes. Honey promotes burn and wound healing. Topical honey treatment has been used to heal wounds and burns since ancient Egypt and is still common today. Honey can help suppress coughs in children. Coughing is a common type of problem for children with upper respiratory infections. These infections can affect sleep and quality of life for both children and parents. Coming up after the break, MTV's sports update and more. Stay with us. I'm in the kitchen. <gasps> this is amazing. I love your tiles. Make an impression with the finest tiles imported by Lens. Lens has a huge selection of various tiles for your wall, floor, and pool needs. All of our tiles are of grade A quality, which are the highest quality tile rated. That means they last longer and are less likely to damage or crack. We're the sole distributor for many reputable companies around the world. At Lens, we have special deals for contractors and bulk shoppers. Shop at any of our three locations to get the best in tiles. Lens, our product, your creation. Introducing the new Softex Soft toilet, toilet tissue, tissue, now available across Guyana. Softex is silky smooth because it's made from virgin pulp. Softex is soft and gentle, soft to, and every gentle touch. to every touch. Even babies can use it. Manufactured and distributed by B Pats Paper Manufacturing, Eccles Industrial Site. The, the choice, choice is clear. clear. Two Softex toilet tissue, super soft and super durable, guaranteed. For the best in truck spares, Daff and Cummings, it's A1 Auto Value New Road Freedom Hoop on the west side. Check them out today for seals, alternators, filters, air valves, pistons and rings, air dryers, shocks, bearings and a whole lot more. Parts and accessories for cars and minibuses. Call today on 254-0890. 64 New Road Freedom Hoop on the west coast of Demerara. A1 Auto Value. Performance without compromise.
Welcome to Industrial Supply of Guyana, Inc. Guyana's sole distributor of NP and ultra lubricants, SKF bearings, seal and belts, international trucks and parts, and NAPA batteries. With a bond capacity of 30,000 square foot, we offer superior brands at affordable prices and the best after-sales service. ISG supplies sustainable integrated solutions to make your business a growing success. Visit us at our new main office at Lot 4Q Peters Hall, ISG, the best opportunity to make the right choice. Welcome to MTV's Sports Update. India's wicketkeeper has climbed his way to third spot in the ICC rankings for Test batsmen after amassing a mammoth 521 runs in the four tests in Australia. Cheteshwar Pujara's tally of 502 runs in the four tests in Australia, his best ever returns on an overseas tour, has launched him to third spot in the ICC rankings for Test batsmen. His runs were amassed in India's historic 2-1 series win that extended their run at the top of the team standings. Pujara struck his overseas best of 193 in the drawn four test in Sydney to follow sentries in Adelaide and Melbourne and was named player of the series. Rishba Pant, who also brought up his best test score of 159 not out in Sydney, jumped 21 spots to vault into the top 20. Pant was India's second highest run scorer in the series with 350 runs. Ravindra Dadeja gained one place to be listed fifth among bowlers, even as he surpassed West Indies captain Jason Holder to climb to second place among all-rounders. Kippany Jordan reporting for MTV's Sports Update. The 2019 edition of the Indian Premier League will take place in India and will start on Tuesday, March 23. This is despite the tournament will clash with the country's general elections. The venue had been the subject of speculation given that the dates clash with the general elections, which are expected to take place in April May. In 2009-2014, the last two seasons that clashed with general elections, the IPL had been moved to South Africa and the UAE. United Amrad Emirates. This time too, the IPL had been proactive about keeping an alternate plan in place. The first priority was always to keep the entire tournament in India, while South Africa and the UAE were again shortlisted as alternate venues. Before the auction held on December 18, the IPL briefed the franchises about the various plans it had chalked out in case the tournament had to be moved out of the country. It is likely that the full IPL schedule will be out in early February. In addition to the home bases of the eight franchises, around four to six additional grounds have been shortlisted as backup. Once the Election Commission of India announces the final dates for the polls, the IPL will consider if any of these venues would need changing. Kippany Jordan reporting for MTV's Sports Update. The Guyana Jaguars is the leading team following the completion of three rounds with 58.4 points in the 2018-2019 Cricket West Indies Regional 4 day Tournament after the six-wicket win over Barbados Pride. In the three matches played, Guyana Jaguars registered wins in all their games. Leeward Islands Hurricanes are ranked second with 43.6 points, copping two wins and one defeat in three matches. Windward Islands Volcanoes has 38.2 points in three matches with two wins and one defeat. Barbados Pride suffered two defeats in three matches with a consolation win. The test-studded Pride team has 29.8 points after three rounds. The Trinidad and Tobago Red Force team, led by Imran Khan, played two matches and has only 10.2 points at number five. Jamaica Scorpions team is in the cellar with 9.8 points, suffering two defeats. In the batting charts, Leeward Islands Hurricanes opener, Monson Hodge, is the leading run scorer with 327 runs. Trinidad and Tobago Red Force opener, Jeremy Solozano, has 236 runs, while Jonathan Carter is in third position with 216 runs. Versami Pramal is the leading wicket taker after three rounds with 20 wickets. The suspended Shane Schillenford is in second position with 17 wickets. Fast bowler, Alzari Joseph has 15 wickets in third position, bowling for the Leewards Hurricanes. Kippany Jordan reporting for MTV's Sports Update. More news after the break. Stay with us. 
Welcome to Industrial Supply of Guyana, Inc. Guyana's sole distributor of NP and ultra lubricants, SKF bearings, seal and belts, international trucks and parts, and NAPA batteries. With a bond capacity of 30,000 square foot, we offer superior brands at affordable prices and the best after-sale service. ISG supplies sustainable integrated solutions to make your business a growing success. Visit us at our new main office at Lot 4Q Peters Hall, ISG, the best opportunity to make the right choice. Welcome back. Now for some news in the region. According to the Trinidad Guardian, one of the men who appeared in the ISIS video speaking about his life in Trinidad and Tobago has been captured fighting with ISIS in Syria. Several international news agencies, including the BBC and New York Times, name him as 35-year-old Zayed Abhal Madid. The U.S. the back Syrian Democratic Forces confirmed the capture on Sunday. Al Hamid is believed to have had dual citizenship as he spent several years living in the United States. According to the database, Hamid joined a terrorist group on April 6, 2014, along with his wife and his three children. He appeared in an ISIS video by stream, speaking about how his family could not practice their faith in Trinidad. The other person captured has been identified as 34-year-old Warren Christopher Clark, also known as Mohammed al Matiri, who formerly taught in Texas. On international seat, North Korean leader Kim Jong-un has arrived in Beijing for an unannounced visit at the invitation of Chinese President Xi Jinping. Kim will be in China until the 10th of January with his wife Ri Soju, according to state media reports. The visit comes amid reports that negotiations are underway for a second summit between Kim and U.S. President Donald Trump. The two met last June, the first such meeting for a sitting U.S. President. Kim met Xi on Tuesday for about an hour. South Korean news agency Yohap reports, citing unnamed sources saying the pair discussed the possible U.S.-North Korea summit. After their meeting, Xi and his wife, Ping Lingyun, hosted a dinner, Yohap says. Speculation had grown in Monday that Kim was possibly making its way to China after Yung have reported that the North Korean train had been seen crossing the border. And that has brought us to the end of regional and international news. Now let's take a look at the Ghana Stock Exchange housing prices for trading session 807. Let's turn our attention to the Denver Harbor Bridge and the Burbies River Bridge schedules. That's a wrap on today's broadcast. Before we go, here's a reminder of our top stories. Government attempts to challenge a successful no-confidence vote in the courts in an abuse of the process. Former Jamaican Prime Minister says Karika must stand ready to assist Guyana as uncertainty persists. Bandits steal safe at Melanie Damishana NIS office, tie guards and return their gun. And in sport, Guyana Jaguars remain a top point stable in regional 40 tournament. Catch our rebroadcast at 23 hours today and at 6 hours 30 tomorrow. On behalf of our news and technical teams, I'm Sandy Ramotar, thanking you for watching. Have a good night.